true uh six close one point one uh okay so uh a bit about myself um i'm using same easy uh saya seorang student lagi uh belajar dekat ada lah satu universiti kat dalam malaysia ni uh saya suka um more than that saya i would like to like stay private nah mungkin lama-lama nanti ikut baris saya akan share okay sama balik so uh, untuk malam ni saya just akan explain basic je, fundamentals je on privilege explanation issues tau saya takkan sentuh pasal Linux privilege explanation ke atau Windows ke atau Mac OS ke you know sebab saya sendiri pun beginner level jadi um, kita kita pun pada-pada lah dengan di sini Okay, uh, and then boleh buka next slide Okay, so um, there are two parts for the next presentation uh, I, I'm going to share with you guys on the first part uh, which is the escalation attacks, uh, attack itself I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share on the definition what is privilege escalation attack how does privilege escalation attack happens what are the methods to perform privilege escalation attack and how to mitigate with privilege escalation attack the kind mitigation in your bargain I can explain you got a bit on application inshallah I think it's right uh, untuk letak application hari ni dekat bahagian mitigation privilege escalation attack lah tapi kalau saya salah saya minta maaf awal-awal pada sifu-sifu dan sifu-sifu yang lain lah saya sendiri pun baru belajar okay for the second part I'll share with you guys on good to read C course 1.1 I'll share on what is C course 1.1 or you might as well call it as C OS dengan walk through C OS 1.1 step by step lah but um macam mana nak cakap uh, before we go, uh, bukan but before we go to ni lah uh, bahagian uh, practical lah hopefully boleh lah sebab saya pun tak tahu apa masalah ada sekarang ni okay uh, next slide please alien thank you okay uh, so the definition for privilege escalation uh, privilege escalation is a vulnerability that is exploited by attacker to gain unauthorized access or impersonate other users in accessing the system within security parameter. In other words, this vulnerability causing threat occurs when an attacker attacks the system by exploiting the vulnerability found and impersonate verified users which then gains them illicit access or privilege just beyond what a user is entitled for. So, Selalunya privilege escalation attack ni lah key Okay macam mangga Mangga yang berantai tu dia lah kunci dia, dia lah kepala dia selalunya so, Lepas tu um, Selalunya macam uh, Isu-isu yang terkait dengan privilege escalation attack ni sebab Disebabkan misconfiguration terhadap sistem tu sendiri lah uh, Lepas tu sistem sistem bug dengan inadequate uh, Inadequate access control. So apa tu inadequate access control? Dia macam kawalan terhadap uh, akses uh, kawalan terhadap user untuk akses satu-satu sistem tu When, Bila kita kata dia inadequate Maksudnya si, uh, kawalan tu poor lah, kawalan tu macam lemah lah macam tu So contoh macam dalam satu website tadi saya dah cakap Kena repeat balik lah sekejap lah uh, Tadi saya cakap macam uh, oh saya perempuan saya suka online shopping So uh, kita, saya as user biasa yang saya boleh nampak cuma warna baju warna, baju, desain pakaian, jenis jenis baju, jenis jenis tudung apa semua dengan harga lah tapi sebabkan masalah inadequate access control or you might as well call it as kalau korang tak familiar dengan inadequate access control ni korang mungkin familiar dengan broken access control dia sama je, cuma beza cuma dia punya, dia pakai synonym je inadequate dengan broken access, broken tu je uh, masalah dia sebab bila kita cakap broken access control ni maksud, maksudnya kita user biasa kita boleh tengok pula bahagian-bahagian uh, seller ke eh tiba-tiba kita tahu pula berapa banyak stok yang tinggal untuk barang tu lepas tu kita eh kita tahu pula uh, details customer lain sebab eh kita tak tahu pun kita, sebab kita user biasa kan so itulah uh, energy access control for the elaboration on the definition itself uh, as vulnerabilities were found in assessing the and defense of an organization system 
attacker will take advantage to penetrate the system and why. Obviously, to gain confidential information and sensitive data after attempting privilege isolation further in the system. Kenapa? Sebab uh, important and confidential information are usually not stored in the first point of penetration. So tadi saya cakap pasal online shop tu kan, kita cakap balik pasal tu kan. Uh, first penetration contohnya, uh, tadi saya cerita attacker tu impersonate saya, uh, ambil saya uh, ambil saya punya account. So uh, kita cakap boleh, kita boleh consider yang first point of penetration tu dia dapat account saya. Dia setakat apa je yang boleh tengok, dia setakat tahu detail saya je. More than that, macam contoh macam uh, apa ke, uh, dia, uh, use benda-benda dalam admin punya data ni, semua tu dia tak boleh tengok. Nombor, nombor card customers yang lain semua, details customers lain semua dia tak boleh tengok. Uh, benda tu yang dia nak sebenarnya instead of uh, setakat ni tengoklah uh, daripada account saya. Uh, and then um, I'll proceed on ni lah uh, se- uh, saya nak cakap, kita akan go slightly deeper on how privilege isolation works tapi benda tu yang tadi saya cakap tu it actually relates lah uh, okay and yeah okay, next slide thank you okay so uh, how privilege isolation works uh, and uh, happen you might as well call it as happen there are two categories of privilege isolation attack it's either horizontal privilege isolation or vertical privilege isolation attack so what are these two uh, and how does each of them works? Next slide, to see you. No. Okay. So first one, horizontal privilege escalation. So what is horizontal privilege escalation? Uh, it's a privilege. It's a privilege escalation in which the attacker gains access to the right of other user users account, either a machine or human with alike privileges. In other words, it is defined as account over. You can tadi saya kata pasal online shop yang uh, attacker tu ambil saya punya account. Uh, ben, uh, itu adalah horizontal privilege as escalation. It usually involves the lower level account such as standard users as it may have lack of appropriate protection. Uh, saya dah cakap tadi, saya dah cakap tadi macam account take over uh, attacker ke, terhadap saya punya account sendiri. Example, uh, another example of horizontal escalation would be when a cookie is manipulated by an attacker to impersonate user. Uh, next slide. Okay. For vertical privilege escalation, this, uh, this attack involves in the increase of privilege as access from what a user, application or other assets has been set for. This requires the attacker to move from a low level privilege access to a higher level, also known as privilege elevation attack. So, macam untuk uh, vertical privilege escalation ni, macam korang tengok dekat gambar situ kan daripada uh, increase in privilege. Maksudnya dia attack daripada bahagian standard user, lepas tu dia naik lagi. Tapi kat IT, dash uh, representative punya uh, bahagian pula. Lepas tu baru dia pergi kepada root, uh, root system tu. Tapi untuk vertical privilege escalation ni, uh, or you might as well call it as privilege elevation attack. Uh, attacker tu kena buat additional macam attack uh, additional macam uh, attack lah terhadap sistem tu macam dia contoh macam dia kena run buffer overflow ke supaya dia boleh override sistem tu dan take control uh, sistem tu lah uh, atau exploit sistem tu sendiri lah uh, next slide okay so what are the methods to perform privilege explanation ada lima saya cerita lima lepas, tapi saya simplify kan dalam lima lima ni tak nak panjang-panjang sangat confuse okay for uh, there are five dan saya cakap first one credential exploitation vulnerabilities and exploitation misconfigurations saya dah cakap tadi sikit pasal misconfigurations ni lepas tu malware dengan lastly social engineering so moving on to the next slide on credential exploitation Uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, credential exploitation. Uh, for credential uh, for credential exploitation, issue arises typically for single authentication factor to which attacker is required to only obtain users' credential in order to get access of the account. As both are obtained, uh, apa both tu? Username dengan password lah. Attacker can literally get access of the account and move around undetected. Maksudnya macam tadi saya cerita, oh attacker tu dapat account saya. So uh, 
admin apa semua dia tak tahu lah dia bukan saya sebenarnya sebab dia tak pakai oh, uh, attacker tu dah pakai account saya so dia move orang yang detected dalam sistem tu macam tu lah some common attacks uh, used by attacker untuk credential exploitation ni masa saya tulis kat situ dictionary attack lah dictionary attack ni apa? dictionary attack ni is a list of common words yang selalunya orang prone untuk guna sebagai jadi password actually korang boleh jumpa benda ni online kat dictionary attacks ni and then dia akan bagi satu list panjang so, oh these are the common password yang people would use as password uh, so yeah I mean kalau korang, I, I don't recommend you guys start but I don't do it lah, it's bad to do it so, but uh, that's how like the the bad guys uh, like uh, you know do credential exploitation lah okay the next one are uh, vulnerabilities and exploitation Vulner vulnerabilities found by attacker in the system will then be exploited either in the aspects of design implementation or configuration that includes the communication protocols operating system web browsers and applications cloud system and network infrastructure Stop masuk iPad. Ah, uh, ayah. Sebab dia nak obtain ah uh, sistem privilege lah. So basically vulnerabilities tu kita sendiri tahu kan vulnerabilities tu apa? Vulnerabilities tu kelemahan. So uh, apa maksud kelemahan dengan ni kan? Uh, apa correlation dia? Maksudnya kelemahan terhadap sistem tu sendiri. Vulnerabilities pada sistem tu sendiri yang menyebab menyebabkan berlakunya privilege escalation attack tu. Sebab tu tadi awal-awal saya cakap uh, privilege escalation attack ni is actually vulnerabilities that causes threat. Maksudnya dia uh, dia asalnya sebenarnya uh, sistem tu je yang lemah sebenarnya tapi sebab attacker yang jumpa jadi attacker ambil peluang terhadap vulnerabilities tu dan ya yeah, dia perform lah privilege escalation attack. Semua macam loophole lah macam tu. Okay next one is configurations. Uh, misconfiguration are typically the common reason for how privilege escalation happens such as failure in configuring authentication, open parts and mistakes in firewall configuration. Uh, contoh, example, example of misconfiguration includes uh, failure in configuring authentication lah maksudnya macam sistem tu sendiri fail untuk identify uh, user tu punya authenticity. So uh, contoh saya cakap tadi yang cookie tu lah maksudnya kita boleh uh, saya temper dengan sorry for the noise, uh, kita boleh temper dengan cookie cookie dekat website tau. So dari situ macam oh Ah, uh, itulah lah, misconfiguration dia. <laughs> Apa? Okay, next one. Ah, uh, malware. Um, legal software that is packed with malware is distributed by malicious things or download with the intention to exploit the vulnerability of the system in conjunction with social engineering or by exploit exploiting the loopholes in the supply chain. There are two directions. First one, malware is deployed at user level. Second one, malware is de being deployed at administrator or root level. Yang first one ni, yang malware is deployed at user level ni, dia uh, kira macam attacker tu dapat account, dapat access uh, user account. Lepas tu, uh, malware tu deployed kat situ, lepas tu dia orang sendiri yang kena escalate, maksudnya macam kena bergerak naik untuk dapat ke, untuk dapat ke bahagian uh, uh, root level lah sendiri. Uh, untuk dapat uh, more privilege terhadap sistem tu and then uh, untuk yang bahagian malware being deployed at administrator or root level ni uh, maksudnya uh, uh, attacker tu sendiri dapat access pada sistem tu lepas tu dia akan uh, uh, yelah dia akan deploy malware tu dekat bahagian root level tu untuk dia dapat persistent access maksudnya dapat gain privilege pada entire sistem lah Example dia root kids. Okay, so the last one, social engineering. Uh, social engineering is an act of manipulating or tricking people in the situation uh, user by preying on human weaknesses and emotions to violate security procedures and expose sensitive and personal information to gain unauthorized access and exclude privileges. Kenapa social engineering ni effective kan? Benda fikir tak? Sebab, okay, bayangkan korang kena, uh, selalunya kan, 
macam oh makcik-makcik tua dapat oh call pada scam ini adalah panggilan dari daripada mahkamah kalau logically thinking macam mahkamah takkan nak nak call kita kan tapi sebab kita manusia eh, diorang tu dah tua eh lah tua tiba-tiba eh, dah lah anak tak ada kat rumah diorang je dekat rumah dia, ha, diorang husband and wife je dekat rumah dah tua semua tiba-tiba dapat call daripada mahkamah so they tend to be panic tau so what why is the court calling uh, why is the court calling me uh, kata aku kena saman semuanya ni aku ada apa so dia panic so sebab tu lah dia orang kena scam sebab dia mainkan emosi dia orang bukan setakat kena main emosi dia dan uh, sebab dia orang tu kan jadi um, they might not know the things that apa yang orang kita sekarang belajar kita dah tahu pasal IT dia orang mungkin tak tahu pasal IT jadi Technically, dia orang tiba dia bodohkan sebab I'm sorry if it sounded, if that sounded rude, I'm sorry but um, uh, I, I don't have, I couldn't grasp the right word like to swing it properly. So, uh, uh, the common text yang I think everyone dekat dalam ni tahulah pasal uh, for social engineering, it can be fishing, farming uh, bukan farming yang farming cucuk tanam tu no, uh, it's P-H-A-R-M-I-N-G Voice fishing and yang lain-lain lah yang korang mungkin akan tahu dia bilang uh, Next slide, please Okay, thank you. So uh, for the last part, uh, last point for uh, the first part is how to mitigate privilege estimation uh, I divided it into four, first one enforce least privilege, password policy, system uh, slash application update, privilege estimation detection. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, for enforcing uh, least privilege, least privilege tu apa? Uh, privilege to least. <laughs> privilege to least maksudnya apa dia ni kan? Maksudnya uh, privilege yang dibahagi kepada setiap-setiap user tu adalah berkaitan dengan apa yang sepatutnya dia dapat je. Contoh macam tadi kan saya cakap pasal online shopping. Asa shopping je dia ni. Uh, online shopping tu saya user biasa saya setakat boleh tengok oh warna baju apa semua benda tu je. Saya tak tahu berapa banyak stock, saya tak tahu pasal uh, order-order customer lain semua saya tak tahu. Bila pasal uh, bila HQ dah hantar pasal ke, bila HQ, uh, HQ tengah packing barang ke semua saya tak tahu. Saya cuma tahu bahagian saya je. Saya cuma tahu, uh, so itu adalah uh, least privilege lah maksudnya uh, dia access for user in that system is limited according to their rules. Pastu the next one, uh, password policies ensuring that the password used is strong enough. Maksudnya macam kalau korang perasan lah sekarang ni kalau kita buat um, kita daftar account kan dia akan bagi sample-sample macam oh strong password yang dia recommend tak combination pun benda tak, tak faham kan so uh, itu adalah one of password policies lah in order for like untuk susah pada attacker untuk penetrate in the account tapi susah juga pada kita kan sebab kita use apa bazi masa sampai 20, 30, 50 perkataan nak tulis panjang-panjang macam tu so dia ada lagi satu untuk password policies which is implementation of multiple factor authorization uh, implementation of multiple factor authorization ni maksudnya nak access dalam uh, sistem tu perlu beberapa, uh, bukanlah beberapa kali access dalam maksudnya macam oh uh, kalau korang Kalau korang ada Samsung punya online shop punya account uh, in order for you to get access into the account korang kena macam first uh, masukkan password lah uh, lepas tu korang kena pilih yang gambar-gambar tu pilih gambar tu lepas tu korang uh, dia akan hantar satu email tau pada korang untuk korang masukkan kod tu ke dalam uh, dia macam page tu before you eventually masuk ke dalam uh, Samsung punya online shop using your account Kenapa dia buat macam tu? In order to protect and to verify that the user itself is the actual user lah. Maksudnya bukan uh, bukan macam tadi lah uh, uh, attacker yang impersonate user tu. Maksudnya it's the actual user. So the next one, system application update. Patch over loopholes found in system application that may cause threat. Uh, threat. System application update ni I think it, it's very close to everyone macam uh, Android punya sistem updates ke uh, Windows 10 update Windows 11 uh, apa lagi um, apa iOS punya update semua benda tu kenapa dia orang release update ni sebab release update the reason is because when uh, 
Saya cakap When uh, An update Is released Sebenarnya yang um, big big packet Contoh macam uh, Windows 10 ke Windows 11 Semua dia tu kan uh, It's because They're patching over All those big loopholes That they have been found In the um, The current punya oh, system lah Kenapa dia orang Release update ni And kenapa actually As users Kena update Sebabnya kalau kita tak update uh, they are uh, Because there are vulnerabilities found obviously uh, Over the system Maksudnya kalau kita tak update Tak nanti dia akan jadi bahaya kat kita Maksudnya kita easily kena uh, Easily macam you know Details kita mungkin akan kena leak ke apa semua Dia macam tu lah The next one The next part is privilege application detection Saya sentuh pasal application hardening I'm not sure if this is correct or wrong But this is what I happen to found uh, For uh, application hardening untuk privilege application lah uh, It's uh, the first one is UEBA User and Entity Behavior Analysis And uh, Privilege yeah. Access Management PM uh, Next slide please Okay, thank you so for UEMBA, what is UEMBA? User and Entity Behavior and System is actually a system, uh, a solution for uh, it's very useful to incident response punya team lah kalau tak silap saya, saya minta maaf kalau saya salah uh, it's very useful sebab apa? sebab uh, UEMBA ni actually dia record segala activity user punya behavior tau maksudnya macam oh contoh you uh, you're you're currently in the United States. Uh, you're currently in the States. Uh, you're living in um, New York, and then um, korang selalu log into contoh macam apa nak bagi yang close dengan korang. Uh, contoh korang selalu main balu pukul dua pagi. Ah uh, contoh contoh. <laughs> contoh ya. Eh? Uh, korang main balu pukul dua pagi selalu dekat New York. Okay. So setiap kali sistem macam orang kena tengok oh, okay, the user akan uh, selalu main pada pukul 2 pagi Kadang-kadang uh, pukul 3 4 pagi sampai pukul 6 pagi contoh Tiba-tiba satu hari ada pula attempt daripada uh, Pakai your details, pakai your credentials Tapi the attempt is from Sri Lanka uh, Valor is Valorant uh, The attempt is for uh, from Sri Lanka, so it's odd lah. It's uh, it's a, it, it's an anomaly lah. Kenapa je tiba-tiba dekat Sri Lanka tak orang ni tanya pilih dekat United States kan? So dekat situ nanti incident response punya team dia akan analyze lah bahagian tu uh, and then uh, if I'm not mistaken, the IP address akan di block lah or, or by the incident response punya team in order to avoid lah any other macam attempt ke lepas tu uh, daripada macam uh, orang tu mungkin orang tu dah tinggal something ke dekat dalam sistem tu so dia akan macam check and then um, do lah ada stuff ini. So the next part, uh, uh, benefits for UEBA uh, addresses a wider range of cyber attacks. Kenapa addresses of uh, addresses wider range of cyber attacks? Because UEBA, you can actually implement it in your network tau Contoh macam, oh, you kerja, the company, you're in uh, Contoh, saya cakap, uh, saya bagi korang in the marketing department You can, uh, they can actually implement UEBA for the cloud dekat uh, marketing department tu So, dia akan add boleh, segala packets yang keluar masuk ke daripada mana IP address, sorry pun you see Segala IP address yang keluar masuk daripada mana-mana user Semua benda tu di-analyze dalam sistem tu sendiri lah So, bila ada attempt ke daripada macam packet ni macam suspicious lah dia akan detect lah Benda tu, okay the next one, uh, requires real IT analysis So, maksudnya macam IT sys logs punya orang tu macam Kurang lah nak diperlukan sebab dia dah ada sistem yang autom uh, automated kan dah autopilot Dia boleh analyze uh, the system punya pergerakan semua autopilot automatically So dia macam kurang lah nak sistem untuk pakai uh, IT analyst untuk tengok satu-satu log movement uh, dalam sistem tu Next one <coughs> Sorry uh, Next one you use this course uh, macam saya cakap tadi lah Saya dah Rasanya macam indirectly you can understand why it's reduces the cost And then next one is lowest, lower risk Sebab 
kenapa no worries sebab tadi saya cakap kan tadi kan sebab dia analyze behavior jadi dia kurangkan risk untuk macam kalau kita manusia kita ada macam human error kalau human error if you guys uh, ya yeah, it's human error macam kita mungkin terlepas pandang kalau kita nak tengok log tu one by one so bila ada year bar ni, year bar ni actually macam akan analyze the whole thing automatically lah the system itself akan buat benda tu so kita tak perlu nak fikir sangat pasal benda tu next one, uh, example of year bar can be examined Uh, the next one, uh, PAM, uh, Privilege Access Management uh, definition, it, it's actually a techniques or technology and technologies, sorry, for controlling LBT access and rights for users, accounts, processes and systems in LT environment. So, uh, techniques and technologies apa ni maksudnya? Tadi kalau perasa saya cakap pasal list, uh, privilege, saya cakap pasal password policies, Benda tu actually bawah privilege access management sebenarnya Kalau korang perasa nak contoh macam uh, Ya, yeah. okay. yeah, contoh macam tu Okay, sorry Next one, uh, benefits uh, Attack surface that protects from internet and external threat Reduce malware infection and propagation Enhance operational performance And easier to achieve and improve compliance Attack surface ni apa? Some of you, I think dalam ni kenapa macam banyak yang perlu sangat sangat Tapi untuk yang tak tahu attack surface tu Attack surface tu adalah contoh macam satu rumah kan kita punya rumah Attack surface tu adalah tempat-tempat uh, yang kita or, yang ada potensi untuk orang masuk Contoh macam tingkap ke apa tu Apa tu yang tempat yang sentar masuk eh, yang kalau situ um, putih tu yang sentar masuk tu uh, Tu pintu ke uh, loting uh, Okay <laughs> Beranda ke itu contoh-contoh attack surface lah So attack, uh, attack surface that protects from internet and external threat I would say attack surface reduction Maksudnya apa attack surface Nah Anis boleh off mic Eh sorry Eh boleh Ah, I'm sorry But can we get one million and Husna Hanis I'm sorry I couldn't hear your voice sebab saya punya ni problem Sorry no, I'm so sorry, uh, I just accidentally um, open my mic So you can proceed oh, oh, Okay, kalau nak apa-apa ke just type dah Okay, oh she accidentally Okay, okay, sorry, sorry uh, Okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, Indian, do you mind? Uh, move to the next slide. Uh, yes, okay. So, tadi sudah cakap pasal application hardening kan. So, apa application hardening tu? Uh, application hardening tu is securing an application from attacks by removing vulnerabilities and adding these of security. Uh, reasons, kenapa kita kena apply application hardening ni pada sistem kita, pada application kita untuk establish Safe environment with a secure software development life cycle method to protect business infrastructure. Determine steps that should be taken if the app is attacked. Allow your application to run safely in zero trust environments to safeguard user credentials. Prevent attackers from examine, examining sorry, internal values, monitoring or tampering with the application. So itulah saya cakap uh, UEBA dengan PAM, eh, PAM uh, apa apa silah, PM tadi tu uh, application hardening sebab dia fulfill reasons untuk application hardening ni lah although dia mungkin macam tak you know oh, ubat yang macam mana sekarang macam oh bila ada masalah terus patch lah tak dia mungkin tak boleh buat macam tu tapi dia actually membantu uh, I, um, Uh, the IT teams untuk macam uh, identify problems, vulnerabilities untuk remove all those things as to untuk sistem lah contoh. So the benefits are uh, reduce loopholes in security so dia cakap tadi protect brand, brand image protect brand image maksudnya apa? So kalau maksudnya you kerja dekat satu company IT bila company IT tu tahu you tak boleh jaga sistem ni betul tu mesti jatuh you punya company punya nama kan mesti macam takkan aku nak pergi gada orang dia orang tu buat sistem dia punya sistem kau tak leak hari tu dia tak ada data leak dia tak patch sistem ha. Jadi macam tu. So bila dia letak application hadian ni dia akan protect brand image. Contoh 
contoh lain macam uh, saya pakai uh, contoh macam Cina hari tu korang punya saya MB Kids kalau tak sedap saya ada issues kan so berapa ramai orang macam oh tak nak pakai CMB mak saya sendiri withdraw duit daripada CMB dan tukar ni dia tak ada kat tempat lain dia dekat bank islam sebab masalah yang CMB punya uh, masalah CMB tu lah punya application tu the next one is avoid financial loss macam saya cakap tadi lah it correlates like to uh, I think by right uh, you can understand lah lepas tu application patches ada tiga jenis first one hot fixes small sections of codes that meant to repair a selected problem a patches collection of fixes are usually released on a periodic basis or when adequate problems are addressed to allow a patch release patches ni contohnya macam ni contohnya macam kita what's the audits oh oh hold on sorry contohnya macam what's the audit oh what's the audit audit baru uh. Tu eh, sebenarnya dia ada include juga sebenarnya patches, bugs yang dia jumpa. Yes, macam update windows, semua tu. Macam hari tu grab ada buat yang uh, update kan dia ada buat macam dia main-main pasal green, uh, glimpse of bugs instead of glimpse of ice tu. Tu pun uh, one of patches juga lah. And then upgrade. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then for upgrade, dia macam from windows 10 to windows 11. Dia sama je macam patches tapi dia lebih banyak. Yes. Thank you, Sifu and Complex. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's all for the first part for uh, tonight's presentation. Uh, can we move on to the next part or can I not take a break? Kizak. Take a break. Kizak, get that. Uh, top now. Sure. Can. Can proceed, ah? Ah, okay. Kita chill chill dulu. Okay, okay, I think kita chill chill dulu. Okay. Kita cincin. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry cakap tadi dengan Okta. Okay. Kita cincin uh, dalam 22.15 kita restart balik lah. Macam ni 5 minutes break. Okay. Thank you everyone. Oh, maaf.
Okay, tak apa, tak apa. Kita bagi dia rest. Kejap. Maybe... Apa, korang boleh ambil makanan ke, ambil minuman ke, anything lah. Hello, perempuan present 56 terus view. Ah, pelik lah. Malam ni ramai Itulah. orang. Malam ni ramai orang pula eh. Kenapa? Kenapa tiba-tiba ni? Selalunya, selalunya 40 orang lah. Empat... Ya, yeah, yang terlebih-terlebih ni... Kenapa? Kenapa boleh jadi macam ni? Maybe, maybe Daisy never scored, ataupun, yalah, biasalah, non-stop bercakap kan, but bagi segi sian saya lah, saya nak tambah Bagi sini, nak tambah sini, kalau, kalau korang nak present, korang chill je, korang just chill and explain with your own tone, ha, macam tu je. Jangan rush sangat Saya kontrol ni Ya, kena job Kena job, lagu apa tu? Jenny Jobs boleh, air uh, rasanya Daisy dah ready. Jenny Jobs boleh tutup lah. Boleh tutup mic nya. Alright, thank you. <laughs> okay, so Daisy boleh continue. Hello, uh, sorry. Uh, Tampak eh? Uh, yeah. uh, okay. 
Thank you Annie. Tak ada tak maulah laptop ni. Kita okay, tak tahu. Okay. Ah, tadi dah application handling kan um, Question sekarang ni dah second part of um, presentation lah Set no No dah tak Lepas application hari ni tu Uh, it's just references lah yang saya punya untuk uh, buat slide lah. You can uh, go to Signet. Signet ni dia ada provide you about analysis tau. So kalau korang, you guys can like, take a look of it lah. Of, uh, in it lah. That's why Hacks Me ni. Hacks Me ni ni is good for beginners untuk macam belajar uh, SQL injection. Semua benda tu dia dah bahagi kan. And you don't have to feel worried sebab hack screen ni dia FOC ke. Dia tak macam try hack ni ke hack the box ke apa. Yang tu kena bayar. You kena subscribe monthly lah. But hack screen ni is FOC. Uh, beyond trust ni pun uh, beyond trust, git flare uh, and then gigs for uh, gigs for gigs lah. I think everyone knows gigs for gigs tu apa. So uh, moving on to the next part of the tonight's presentation is would you read CQS 1.1? <laughs> I'm sorry but I don't think I can do any practical at the moment sebab laptop saya macam, macam tak nak cooperate dengan saya malam ni tapi saya ada buat walkthrough. Walkthrough ni pun uh, boleh tanya lah siapa yang rasa kenal orang-orang yang kenal saya secara betul tu diorang sendiri tahu yang saya buat benda tu sendiri lah kalau nak verification on benda tu. Uh, the authenticity kalau korang tak rasa benda tu tak authentic yang saya, bukan saya yang buat, saya sendiri buat saya minta tolong Genji <laughs> hari tu, okay uh, so boot to read CQS 1.1 so what is CQS 1.1? CQS 1.1 is actually a CF or it's actually a vulnerable machine lah uh, yang dibuat menjadi CDF uh, with the objective to compromise the machine and gain root privileges over the system This CTF demonstrates clearly how hacking tactics may be used to infiltrate a network in secure setting. It's actually a basic, uh, it's very good for beginning because it's actually, it shows the basic, uh, basic pen testing for beginners. So it's very suitable for beginners. If you want to try, you can try it now. Saya ada share link dekat situ untuk you sendiri download si Sikos 1.1 tu, dia ada lagi satu version, 1.2 tapi saya tak buat lagi 1.2 tu sebab 1.2 tu a bit tricky than this point. Okay, um, besides that, in order for, before you start lah, before you nak buat Sikos 1.1 ni, make sure yang your kali Linux and your Sikos tu disetkan dia punya network adapter, uh, dia punya network adapter tu both disetkan kepada host only. Jangan set pada bridge ke net network ke no kena host only je. Sebab apa? Sebab senang nanti uh, sebab dia tak boleh macam connected dengan uh, connection kat luar lah. So nanti kalau you nak buat IP scanning ke, you nak buat any map semua tu senang. Okay, and then next slide please. <coughs> okay, kita pergi pada walkthrough seat course 1.1. Next slide. Walkthrough ni terbahagi kepada tiga part. So first part is scanning and enumeration. Second part would be um, exploitation which is triple shell lah and then, and then the last part is privilege escalation or post exploitation lah. That's why I choose, uh, that's why I choose CQOS 1.1 because it actually shows privilege escalation and post, uh, post exploitation uh, for, uh, in order for like everyone to actually grasp what is privilege escalation in life and, and in hoping that you guys will experience it yourself but if I need things are not cooperating with me. Well, at the moment, okay. So for the first part, scanning and enumeration. What you have to do is open the terminal and scan the IP address of the technician. Technician ni apa? Technician ni you punya kali Linux tau. First first, jangan buka sequels. Uh, buka, I mean like buka, tapi tak boleh nak terus masuk sequels tu kan. You mesti kena. Sebab nama dia pun boot to root. So you have to guna lagi satu machine which is your kali Linux untuk uh, uh, penetrate into sequels. So what you have to do, you pergi ke kali ni nak show, you pergi buka terminal dia, lepas tu you scan you punya IP address, you scan IP address kali nak show, get, get to, uh, um, take note on uh, your attacking machine, your kali nak punya IP address. Macam mana nak uh, uh, dapat IP address you punya kali nak? Just enter, 
the command if config. Lepas tu nanti dia akan keluar kat situ kalau nampak kat situ uh, ETHO, ETHO is your attacking machine punya uh, IP address lah. Uh, next slide please. Okay. Number two, enter root terminal and scan for uh, slash 24 inch of IP address to find the IP address of C equals 1.1. So macam mana nak, uh, kena, uh, macam mana nak scan? Uh, I arrange IP address tu untuk dapatkan IP address uh, sequence and command. Uh, command prompt dia, uh, saya tulis kat situ so don't like discover dash i tapi sebenarnya once you dah masuk root, uh, ma macam mana masuk root? Depends on your kalinas lah. You might use sudo saja ke atau you might use sudo su ke, you might use su je ke atau kalau macam lupa command tu you can just go to the, dekat bahagian terminal dekat atas sekali tu yang gambar terminal tu you just click on the arrow, arrow ke bawah lepas tu dia ada warna merah tau warna merah tu root terminal kalau korang masuk daripada starting dekat bahagian scan IP tu pun boleh juga, senang je so nanti the following following command korang tak perlu nak letak sudo, sudo, sudo sebab apa sudo ni root punya command lah untuk you know, untuk masuk root access lah okay net discover I, dash it uh, ETHO. ETHO ni you can replace it with IP address lah sebab ETHO or ETH0 it actually signifies the attacking machine. You may replace it with your machine IP address lah. And then uh, next step, port scanning the IP address of Seacoast to find open port and the service running on the port uh, via using the command and map dash SC dash SV Uh, lepas tu you letak IP address sequence tu lah. Macam mana nak tahu IP address sequence you akan tengok kat situ. Okay. Uh, scanning. Okay. Uh, untuk scan IP range ni dia sangat-sangat lama tau selalunya. Uh, saya tak tahu dia appropriate way tapi saya guess saja sebenarnya dia punya IP address tu lah. It's either um, selalunya kalau IP address tu familiar it's not Uh, the right, uh, it's not sequence punya IP address lah. It's usually the strange one lah. It's either the tengah-tengah one or the hujung one lah. The, the last one lah. Okay. Uh, the next slide please. Allah Akbar. Okay. Eh, eh, okay. Okay. Uh, number four. Number four. Uh, create the proxy with sequence IP address with the port found. So macam mana nak create pro proxy ni kan? Senang je korang just pergi dekat korang punya web browser. Lepas tu kat web browser tu pergi dekat tepi tu dia ada garis-garis uh, dia ada macam sign. Dia dalam Mandarin dia tulis tiga kan yang apa? Allah. Chinese character punya nombor tiga tu. Uh, korang klik dekat situ. Atau mungkin dia not tabertindih tiga kali dekat banyak web browser korang. Depends lah on what kind of web browser yang korang guna. Klik dekat situ. Korang pergi dekat setting. Setting gambar apa? Setting yang gambar screw. Screw? Screw ke tu? Ah, tak, tak, tak tahulah apa nama dia kan. Ah, korang klik kat situ. Lepas tu korang pergi tulis. Dia ada macam magnifying glass dia kat situ kan. Find apa-apa pun semua. Lepas dia dah senarai kan kat situ. Tapi situ korang tengok general lah apa semua benda. Pergi je dekat magnifying glass tu. Korang tulis kat situ connection setting. Nanti dia akan terus keluar. First thing yang korang nampak tu, first line tu bawah magnifying glass tu dekat bahagian kanan macam ada satu box yang you can click untuk setting. Click on that box lepas tu dia akan terus pop up keluar untuk configuration untuk proxy lah. So click uh, on manual proxy configuration. Nanti yang macam only host lah apa semua benda tu, tu tak nak. Kita tak nak sebab kita nak start manual, config, uh, manual proxy tu sendiri. Jadi click on manual proxy configuration and then enter uh, HTTP proxy tu apa? You enter sequence tu punya IP address. Sebab kenapa nak letak IP address sequence? Sebab sekarang ni kita punya intention adalah to to masuk into sequence tau. So kita letak je IP address sequence tu lepas kita letak port. Mana nak dapat port ni? Okay. Belak uh, sorry alien, do you mind kalau reverse ke belakang? Okay. Dekat, uh, dekat bahagian Uh, step number 3 tu yang saya cakap pasal nmap uh, punya scan tu dekat situ dia akan scan port uh, 
uh, port tau, open port tau. Dia ada dua open port yang jadi tu TCP. Benda tu tak ada guna. Eh, bukan bukanlah tak ada guna. Maksud macam semua port pun itu open kan. Kita punya port yang kita nak adalah 3128 tu. Itu open port yang kita akan guna lah untuk in, masuk ke dalam sikus lah. So, uh, boleh pergi next slide balik ini. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so dekat bahagian port sebelah HTTP proxy tu just enter 3128 and then kat bawah tu ada satu box kecil. I also use this proxy port FTP and HTTPS. Click on that and then kat bawah tu sikit lagi scroll sikit ke bawah kat situ dia, you need to isi no proxy for local host Uh, comma and then you have to enter local host punya IP address lah. Local host you punya IP address yang mana? Yang first kali masa kita scan uh, kita scan kita punya attacking machine punya IP address kan? Yang LO flex apa benda semua tu yang 12.0 uh, oh 12 pula 127.0.0.12 itu kita punya local host lah. I think of everyone punya local host is the same I think sebab tak payah sebab. Okay. The next step, uh, the fifth step is look out for IP address via browser. Since the web page is suspicious, try adding robots.txt at the behind of the IP address in the search bar. So first, kan kita dah dapat dah IP address untuk sikus tu kan kita buat apa? Kita pergi kat web browser lepas kita, uh, kita letak je IP address sikus dekat dalam tu. In fact, you actually, if you get the grasp of um, any website punya IP address, you can actually just search the punya IP address. Uh, you can actually just search a website via the punya IP address kalau untuk orang yang tak tahu lah. Uh, that's a sign but I think everyone knows here. Uh, kalau dah tahu, it's good. Uh, it's good to share with you guys on that lah. Uh, so, uh, the letak IP address, uh, the letak IP address di course tu nanti dia akan keluar macam blair. Kenapa dia nak blair kan? So, kita mesti, ini eh, mesti suspicious. Aku nak nak blair kat orang pula. So, kita slash kat echo dia tu dekat belakang hujung sekali de lepas uh, IP address uh, IP address equals tu kita letak slash kita letak robots.txt nanti uh, dia akan keluar macam user agent star disallow disallow slash move cms it's actually it shows you that there's a site that correlates with um uh, that related to the IP address lah and It actually allows you, it, it actually shows to you, you know, oh this is the site. It contains something. Gentle lah. Uh, next slide please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the sixth, sixth step is to replace robots.txt with wolf cms yang kita dapat tadi tu. You will be then directed to wolf cms site. Bila kita replace dengan robots.txt itu kita replace dengan wolf cms tu kita akan redirected ke wolf cms punya site lah and uh, next slide please uh, so for the seven uh, step oh, sorry. Uh, try get thing to log uh, try get to log in to the login page by adding nak add apa mesti uh, uh, just add sekarang ni mission kita adalah untuk masuk ke admin page untuk wolf CMS tu untuk masuk dalam Wolf CMS tu sebab dia contain something yang very important for OS 1.1. So macam mana? Macam mana nak cari admin page senang je? Saya ni macam uh, <laughs> selalunya macam kalau untuk website saya akan macam pakai PHP ke apa kan? It's very simple. You just like put slash behind your uh, yang uh, apa URL tu and just, just tulis admin ke apa ke you akan masuk lah. Uh, ke bahagian admin tu. So untuk uh, Wolf CMS ni uh, replace it with, uh, not replace, add it with um, question mark slash admin slash login in the search bar login with username and password admin. Sebenarnya takkan bagi kita apa login credentials tu, username dengan password kita. Oh, so kita just pakai tembak je sebab considering that sequence 1.1 is actually for beginners so Mm, you can actually use other alternative file untuk brute force right? Let's just keep, keep brute force as the last alternative lah. Uh, alternative lah. So, just kita just try nasi, kita letak je. Uh, admin, admin, nanti kita akan terus masuk. Itu credentials je lah for any, uh, siapa yang nak buat sequence ke credentials dia adalah admin 
untuk username dan admin untuk password untuk login pada Wolf CMS. Okay. So kita go to the next part for um, C course 1.1 which is exploitation or reverse shell. Next slide please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So for exploitation, uh, first step is you need to go to the browser. Kita, maksudnya kat kita punya host lah, kat kita punya Windows ke kalau ni pakai uh, Mac ke apa kan, bila dekat browser sendiri tu dekat luar, bukan dalam vulnerable machine tau, no bukan dalam, it not even inside the kali that you're currently using tak boleh guna pun internet sebab apa, it's not connected to you punya um, network, current network yang you're using lah So go to the browser and search for link yang saya bagi kat situ lah GitHub and test monkey PHP reverse shell dia dah siap bagi coding lah dekat situ so simply just copy the code lepas tu uh, next slide please thank you uh, so uh, cop dah copy tadi PHP punya coding semua dekat pentest monkey punya site tu you need to create a document and paste the coding into the document mana nak, dekat mana nak create document dengan piece coding ni dekat dalam kali Linux lah uh, sim, simple, eh, dekat ni lah dekat dalam kali Linux tapi dekat mana letak je kat desktop senang jangan complicated dengan keadaan lah <laughs> uh, lepas tu uh, ensure the coding is saved in PHP format maksudnya file docu document tu make sure yang kita simpan dalam PHP format macam mana nak convert jadi PHP format senang je lepas dah copy tu Uh, lepas tu copy, uh, lepas tu copy tu save, nanti bila dah tekan save as tu uh, just letak nama file tu, contohnya nak letak nama reverse, uh, you nak letak nama reverse shell just lah reverse shell dot php, nanti file tu sendiri akan terus jadi page dot php punya format lah lepas tu, Allah uh, dalam uh, coding yang kita copy tu tadi tu dekat situ ada uh, ada part IP address dengan port tau You need to change the IP address IP address the, kepada attacking punya device pun uh, attacking device punya IP address lah. Lepas tu uh, set port tu kepada uh, any kind of ports lah. Uh, kenapa nak kena tukar port tu? Sebab kita akan buat port listening. So you need to change lah the port. Uh, because the, uh, the port will be used as a listening port lepas tu save it into folder lah okay next one uh, next slide please thank you okay next uh, the next step upload the php file in the folder uh, in file section of the website okay pergi balik dekat wolf cms tadi tu sekarang kita dah masuk dekat dalam admin punya page kan kita klik dekat bahagian file Lepas tu dekat situ dekat bahagian tepi sekali dia ada tulis kat situ uh, dengan simbol arrow warna biru kalau tak saya uh, klik dekat situ dia, uh, untuk upload file. Lepas tu kat situ uh, you can browse for file lah uh, untuk uh, upload uh, and, and, and browse for file. File apa yang nak kena browse and upload? You kena upload but, uh, file reverse shell yang file .php tu tadi you kena upload dalam uh, wolf cms tu lah. Lepas tu Uh, pergi dekat search engine pergi yang dekat bahagian atas tu kan ke atas tu you change directory to ip address os slash aduh sakit tangan uh, cms slash public uh, sekarang ni kita tengok index view uh, kita tengok view dalam public lah uh, for the website so nanti dia akan keluar kat situ index of uh, slash wolf cms slash public so nanti dia akan keluar lah uh, parents directory images sequence1.1.php yang saya letak sequence1.1.php lah and then teams uh, next slide okay uh, open root terminal and start listening to the port so sekarang ni tadi kan dah tutup kalau korang tak tutup lagi tak apa lah just enter clear lepas tu nanti padam dan nanti korang buat lah port um, korang boleh enter Allah oh, Allah korang okay korang boleh enter command prompt lah uh, kalau korang dah padam um, buka root terminal lagi sekali lepas tu start listening to the port as per entered in php file uploaded maksudnya apa kan tadi saya kata kita kena tukar port 
uh, pot yang kita dah letak dalam PHP tu kan kan dah tukar contoh tadi saya letak 44444 so nanti 4444 tu adalah pot yang saya akan guna untuk attacker machine attacking machine uh, machine attacking machine saya akan dengar pot tikus tu itu dia punya bridge lah macam tu dia punya channel lah macam tu lepas tu uh, command yang saya akan guna adalah nc nc tak apa nc tu netcat uh, dash nlvp uh, space uh, letak pot yang kita letak tadi tu macam saya saya letak 444 tadi lepas tu space dash vvv vvv lepas tu nanti kita akan dengar macam and then kita biarlah kita punya uh, attacking machine dia akan start listening to uh, port on uh, on the port 4444 lepas tu dia akan connected ke uh, COS tu lah nanti dia akan keluar macam oh Lanak COS benda tu lepas tu nanti uh, okay. can we move to the next slide kita akan terus masuk kepada bahagian privilege escalation or post exploitation. Okay, tadi kan dah masuk dekat, uh, tadi kan kita dah macam, oh kita dah masuk dekat dalam sequence lah sebenarnya. Kita dah, uh, dah ada bridge dah antara, antara kita punya attacking machine dengan uh, sequence. So, uh, apa kita kena buat? First kali lepas dah masuk ls uh, lepas tu pergi pada uh, file vari, uh, var slash www slash woof cms lepas tu kat situ nanti dia akan keluar sekali dokumen yang ada dalam uh, woof cms lah lepas tu uh, check the content of config.php to obtain the username and password of sequence command prompt dia uh, senang je command prompt dia obviously kalau nak tengok content of file kita pakai cat lah cat lepas tu uh, pakai directory yang kita pakai tadi tu var www wcms lepas tu slash config.php and then kita akan get uh, get the, um, the content of the file lah dia akan banyak dia panjang panjang sangat-sangat banyak sangat-sangat tapi mana nak cari uh, apa mana nak dapat credentials untuk sequence 1.1 ni pergi pada bahagian database settings dekat situ dia ada define db underscore dsn lepas tu dia ada define db user define db pass define define db user uh, tu apa define define db user tu ada username kepada sistem tu so dekat dalam sequence 1.1 ni uh, dia punya username adalah root. Lepas tu uh, dia punya password db underscore pass. Password dia adalah john lias123. Uh, john lias123, john add123, I don't know. Uh, you, whatever that suits you lah. You panggil lias ke atau you panggil add ke. Boleh je. So itu adalah yang db user tu adalah you punya, dia punya uh, sequence punya username db pass tu adalah john123 punya password eh uh, john at one john at 123 punya password ok next slide ok uh, next step enter root terminal again tapi kita dah dalam root terminal tak payah nak enter lagi lah just eh tak kita kena eh tak sebab tadi tu dah dah masuk dalam sequels kan so sekarang ni uh, kita uh, exit je lah uh, yang tadi tu lepas tu bagi lagi sekali masuk lagi terminal atau you can just open another terminal lah enter terminal and try to enter sequence via ssh command prompt dia adalah ssh uh, sequence at ip address at at bukan et at yang lain tu so enter ip address sequence lah uh, so nanti dia akan uh, welcome to ubuntu blah 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 semua benda tu so it shows that you actually had entered sequels and then get into the root of sequels and go to the directory and list out possible available files in sequels. Macam mana? Macam mana nak enter root sama je. Uh, macam mana nak enter root dalam sequels sama je macam kali ni nak sudo su root lepas tu cd lepas tu uh, uh, sudo su root lepas tu cd lepas tu tau yang curl punya macam dash tu, ke di dash tu, lepas tu ls. Lepas ls tu nanti korang akan dapat satu text file. 
Lepas text file tu, uh, korang kena check content text file tu apa dia. Lepas tu, macam mana nak check? Just enter cat, lepas tu nama text file lah. Lepas tu nanti dia akan keluar if you're viewing this route, you have successfully completed equals 1.1. Thank you for trying. So, thank you that's how you uh, get into nah, sequence 1.1 lah. So, you have now successfully complete sequence 1.1. I really want to show you guys the hands on but uh, unfortunately there's something wrong with my laptop. Tak tahu kenapa malam ni dia macam razuk dengan saya. Saya tak boleh nak buat uh, try. Saya tak boleh nak try it out.